and you want to do more acting, like that's still in you. But I don't want to do it because, oh, I'm an actor and to do this. I want to do it for fun. I want to be back on TV. You know whose job I would like to take? Not on that show, the old job, Married with Children. I want to take Ed O'Neill's job. Why am I not Ed O'Neill? I look like Ed O'Neill. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that character, you think about it kind of grumpy and stuff. Boom, I'll do that. Listen, there could be a modern family in your future. There could, there could be. There could be. And according to you, you will save every penny. Uh, well, I got a couple of pennies nowadays, but I'll say my wife saves the money and she does a fine job at it. Do you love, like, is there ever, speaking of that, is there ever a role, like I spoke to someone who was an actress who almost got the Julie Bowen role, she says, like, on Modern Family. Like, have you ever been heavily in the mix for something even in the past that like we know about where like, oh my God, that could have been you. And it turned out to be some big role or you turned it down. Oh, I never turned down anything, man. Who do you think you're talking to? That's smart. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, it, the showbiz that I know is I think a little more dirty than the show business we're doing right now. This is clean, you're having a good time. Uh, somebody else has a podcast, somebody else is doing something on Twitter. I can't tell you excuse me, what I would do next because I don't know what's coming. I don't know what, what is next, but whatever it is, I'd probably do it. So why is this clean and how is show business dirty? Well, look around you. You got a pastel almost white behind you. You know, there's not a lot of moving parts, not a lot of grips, not a lot of cursing men to say, oh, we got to get this mother. Blah, blah, blah. It just looks clean and good to go. And it's a self uh, encompassed what you do. You're like, you're the guy and you're going to do it. And whether you're good or bad will be up to you. That's what I like about it. Yeah. So have you ever almost gotten a role that, you know, like the Ed O'Neill role, like you said, like I, I, I could picture you now that you say that as the next Ed O'Neill. Well, I was already on the show when I said I wouldn't do any more of the show. And that was an episode of chips, which I did several episodes and I was really good at martial arts. And uh, I don't know if they heard it. It was just lucky that uh, I was like, as the part was a guy who kicked ass. And uh, um, there was rumor that I was going to end up being this troubled teen. And I was going to start to give speeches to Eric Estrada's 12 year old incarcerators. So uh, I was close, but I said, I, I said, I can't, I can't do it. But then I fell into radio because I really needed that job. I really needed that job. That job paid for my insurance for years. So radio really kind of saved you, so to speak. Yeah, it couldn't have been more horrible, man. It just, I, I'm not as either embarrassed about it or whatever it is that I could be, because whatever I was before radio, I don't think it led me to radio, but it could have, but whatever led me to radio, I'll do that. I said that about a wife one time, she's in the next room. Whatever weirdness led me to my lovely wife, Amy, that'd be great. Whatever, whatever weirdness drove me to radio, oh, I couldn't be more grateful. What about, you know, it's reboot mania. Everything is being rebooted. Lots of stuff really successfully. What do you think of the idea of like a Partridge Family reboot? I, I'm a little old because I thought about this. I gave it some real thought. And that was, I would be, are you versed in these characters, the Partridges? Say it again. Am I what? You, well, I'll just answer the question. You don't have to give you some kind of quiz. Uh, it was in negotiations to do a new Partridge Family with me as Ruben Kincaid, the guy that handles the money. I could not have said yes fast enough, um, but uh, 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 they they couldn't do it. So they did a show called The New Parker Family and people uh, tried out to be the new Parker Family. And I think one of them turned out to be a big star. Who was that, honey? Emma Stone. Emma Stone tried out to be uh, Lori Partridge. Wow. Yeah, how's that uh, uh, Academy Award now? So they were gonna do the, but this show never went anywhere, The New Partridge. Well, the, what were the contest, Be The New Partridge, that aired on VH1. Uh, but no, it never came to close enough to actually decide and talk about money. But you were approached or it was your idea to be like the Ruben well, King I, I was one of the hosts of, of the show and the contest. So it was all good. Uh, but there were the numbers just said, oh, nobody cares that much about the new Partridge trip. But to do that other show, because I mean, I think that like where you would have been like the Ruben Kincaid type. I'm too old. Ruben Kincaid dig this. I'm 62 now. Ruben Kincaid was 34. You know, you just forget. So, uh, yeah. What if they were going to go ahead and do like a reboot, like a TV show or a movie and cast, like, you know, we're going to cast, we're going to do a whole new cast of like young Hollywood. Anyone come to mind of who you think should play Danny? Wow. Uh, no, because I would hate and resent that child very much. And I was uh, beside myself with this new Partridge. I, think I didn't even think about it. That They were calling this other kid Danny Partridge. Uh, I, I didn't like it at all. But if there was a way, if you said, 
well, you're the new Ruben, or for whatever reason they wanted me on the show, I'd say yes. That, you know, it was a really good time. I didn't have a whole lot going on being a 10 year old. I wasn't a great 10 year old. And I would get to the set of the Partridge family, like, oh, I get it. You're king. It was bitching. That's, I don't know. I, I think that's a good idea for a show. Me too. What about, you know, listen, you've had an interesting life. We just talked about it all. What if they were going to make a movie about your life? Any actors come to mind to play like a younger version of you? Well, they kind of did it. They kind of, they did a, a, a new part. Of, well, there was that show. What was your question exactly? Like if they were going to do a movie based on like Danny Bonaducci. Absolutely. Well, I did it. I wrote one and they did it. And it was a good payday for one day, but it didn't do anything. And then David Cassidy wrote one. And my f opening joke for this guy was, hey, David Cassidy wrote a new book. He called it, come on, get happy. He didn't. As we wrap up, do you ever get starstruck? I mean, you started, you said, with a career with like starring in a movie with Elvis, like you've met everyone, you've boxed everyone, you know, like, do you get starstruck? Like, is there anyone that leaves you starstruck? I, I do. There are people that I just go, how did they do that? Like Dustin Hoffman, you just gotta go, how are you pulling that off? And Meryl Streep, I know, across the gender barrier, how are you doing that? It's just, it's so amazing because you know, if I had, uh, uh, let's say, I'm reading something from here that's supposed to say, hey, what the hell's going on, man? Well, I can say that as well. She, can, How does she walk off with Academy Award? But she apparently has several different ways to say, hey, man. Meryl is like, I don't understand it either. Like, she's brilliant. No, really everything, everything hits. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I'd like to give people a chance at the end. Thank you for answering all of my questions, but anything else you want to talk about? A plug, you could do whatever. I was happy to do it. Um, I've gotten into the Twitter and the TikTok and all of that stuff. So honey, if you wanted me to plug one of those things, what would it be? You could plug them all. Oh, you're fine, young man. TikTok is ready for this. The real Danny Bonaduce, a lot of letters. And I think uh, uh, Instagram is also the real Danny Bonaduce. What the hell is the Twitter? The douche man. Figure it out how it spells, but it's awfully close to douche. Do you love TikTok? I'll have to I did, check out. I did a thing, and I do this a lot. I like this. My wife thought it up, and it's been so much fun. But I got on TikTok the first time, and my wife said, well, don't get over excited. If you can get like 30 hits, or 30, I'm sorry, 30,000 people looking at it, that's the greatest. Two million in one day. My first, very first TikTok thing, and what I did was I go to novelty record stores or used record stores, and I find a partner channel, I think, and while talking to my wife who's recording it, I sign it and then I put it back. <laughs> and it's one guy that came over from Tokyo to find one and he missed it. <laughs> he didn't get it, but I love the guy and I, I sent him uh, something. But uh, yeah, that, that two million hits in 20, 24 hours. Is that right, Derek? Yeah. yeah. So isn't, that, isn't that crazy? So I enjoy them. Don't get me wrong, because if I seem overly excited, well, I'm that kind of guy. But aside from that, I've never done it before. This is all news to me. That's why I had to have my wife, my addresses. This is two million people watch me do anything. That's the greatest thing ever. So I'm really into TikTok and Twitter and Instagram. Love them. That's amazing. And now someone flies over and tries. That's crazy too. See the power of it all. There's only one negative about it because it's great. People, I did it in Canada. They did a whole story on the Canadian news about it. And, uh, it was it was super stuff like that. But here's the problem is the record stores are getting hip to it. Somebody is calling them up, I guess, if you can still call people up these days and say, hey, Danny Bonaducci signed a Partridge Family Album. Will you pull it aside for me? Well, that's not fair, but I don't know what to do. If I don't tell them where I am, how are they gonna find it? So I guess first come, first served, it is the signing of the Partridge Family Albums and putting it back, one of the high points of my day. And sneak in and not getting caught because how stupid would I look? Hey, that guy's stealing a Partridge Family Album. But I, I have a great time with it. Or like that guy's just writing on a record. Like what the hell's going on here? The very first one I said, look, this was $4 and now it's worth three. The news guy that covered that story agreed with me. I wanted to go down there and punch him in the nose. What do you mean it's only three now? But it, it's great. I, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time doing this and I appreciate that you asked me to be on. I appreciate you.